the impact that both Keith Williams and T. Martin have had on the Ravens organization before any receivers even touch the field. How dominant can this Ravens offensive line really be? Something Adafi Away brings to the Ravens that they haven't had in a long time. These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Don't get mad. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. What it is. Yeah, we talking sports shot out in Graven Vance. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Hey there, buddy. How's it going? Engraven here. Good morning. Hope everything's good. Now, before we dive into this episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers, I gotta give you guys a little backstory on it. But while I'm giving you that backstory, you can check out this custom-made jersey that I got from fcustom.com. And if you want to get yours, you just go to their website and use code Engraven for 10% off. Let them know that I sent you. They'll take good care of you, buddy. But anyway, yesterday, we made an episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers. It was a quick episode, it was only like 15 minutes long, because you know those things, they can go on for a really long time. But the title question was, how dominant can this Ravens offensive line be? And it was a very, very good question, and we dove into it. But check out this thumbnail. See, this thumbnail was going to be the thumbnail that I used for the video. But guess what happened about 15 minutes before that video was finished uploading? The Ravens decided, oh, we know that that Ingraven is going to make a video on our offensive line in the current state of it. So we're going to go ahead and sign Alejandro Villanueva. So they signed Alejandro Villanueva and boom, that made that question not null and void, but it made my answer change because the answer that I answered, it featured Tyree Phillips as a starting right tackle. But guess what? Alejandro Villanueva is going to be the starting right tackle. So... This episode is going to be a little bit different. I just had to let you guys know ahead of time. I love you. Hope you can enjoy. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers, which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team. And we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL Questions from Subscribers, then just send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Please make sure you tell somebody you love them today. Please, please. It goes a super long way. Uh, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. Uh, I appreciate y'all being willing to spend a lot of your time with us every single day. Every single day. Uh, real quick, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Um, thank you for supporting the channel just a little bit extra. Um, and just the team keep it clean as a whole. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for coming to the videos Thank you for commenting your thoughts on the videos commenting your thoughts on the questions or whatever the topic is that we're talking about um, and just really Engaging with the videos and engaging with whatever it is that the subject is so I appreciate that a lot I thank you a lot and we got a lot of good questions to get into Let's do it. Now, the new first question on this episode of NFL questions from subscribers came from my boy, Mike B. And this is the revised edition. You'll see the regular edition later on in the video. But anyway, it said to me, it feels like the majority of Ravens fans are more excited about Ben Cleveland than our first rounders, me included. Stanley, Cleveland, Bozeman, I'm locking him in at center. Zeitler and probably Phillips at tackle. See, he had that same thing that I was thinking. But now let's insert Villanueva at tackle. He said, that sounds scary, but just how dominant do you think they could really be? And who is the most intriguing draft pick to you? Love you, man, and hope everything is good. So I'll save the draft pick question for later on. But right here, how dominant can this offensive line be? Now, so we flipped Villanueva and Phillips. So Villanueva insert him and remove Phillips, and he can be a backup guy. So with Villanueva, I didn't know that he was 6'9". I, I did not know that he was that much of a giant. I had no clue. Um, and, and one thing that a lot of people have said about him, I see a lot of Steelers fans say, oh, he's not that good. He's, uh, he's a terrible pass blocker. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, you guys, you didn't really get a good player. I, I saw that a lot. Um, but I did see that in his run uh, block win percentage, he was actually higher than Orlando Brown Jr., I believe. And I was like, whoa, hold up. Wait a minute. But then when you think about that with Alejandro Villanueva, um, and, and I saw somebody in the comment section say, oh, man, he got that Spanish down. Oh, I mean, we live in Miami. We got no choice but to. But anyway, um, his job as a Ravens offensive lineman is completely different from his job as a Pittsburgh Steelers offensive lineman. Think about it. Pittsburgh Steelers, did they have a running game last year? No. N-O. No, they didn't. 
Did Ravens have a running game? <laughs> I mean, I, ain't even, I can't even finish that with a straight face. Because I can't ask that question with a straight face because you all already know the answer. But his job is going to be so much different. You know, even though they did add receivers, they added Sammy Watkins, they, they added um, Rashad Bateman, they added Tylen Wallace. Even though they're going to be making some changes to their offense, according to Greg Roman, seeing is believing them. But we can expect them to make some slight changes to their offense. They are still going to be a dominant running team. That's going to be their priority is the run game. We know that. So with Villanueva, that makes his job that much easier. It makes it that much easier. So if, even if he isn't the best pass blocker in the world, hey, guess what? That's not going to be your primary job. Now, you do need to protect Lamar Jackson now. You, you sure do. But the running game is what the, is, that's the Ravens' bread and butter. So while you will still need to be a good pass blocker, you're not going to be asked to do it not nearly as much as he was asked to do it in Pittsburgh. Not nearly as much. Like these dudes, <laughs> these guys, like, they throw that ball everywhere. They throw that ball. And it's like a gift and a curse all at the same time. Now, Ravens, they run that ball. And you know offensive linemen, they would prefer, shout out to my guy Cam Neal, they would probably prefer to run block a lot more than pass block. Because pass block, you, not that you got to have more technique for pass blocking than run blocking because they both require skill and smarts. But pass blocking, these guys are coming at you. The defense is coming at you. But run blocking, you going at them. So it's you versus them and just that willpower, man. So Alejandro Villanueva, he came to a good spot, especially, too, because with Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson makes life easier as an offensive lineman. He really does. And he has elevated the play and elevated the level of offensive linemen around him. He has. Because what he can do back there, he can make you look a lot better than you might be. He really can. Not to say that anybody who's offensive lineman is bad or whatnot, but he can make you look even better than you are. Because he can make a bad stat wash away like that. Say, for instance, you're offensive lineman and you allow pressure to get in. You're like, oh, boy, I'm giving up a pressure. This is going to this is going to go on my resume. I'm giving up a pressure. Oh, boy, I hope I don't give up a sack. Oh, that's not going to look good when it's time for me to resign, when I want to get my contract with my next team. I don't want to have given up a sack. But Lamar Jackson said, oh, somebody coming in? Okay, you know what? I'm out. Bye. He'll take off. He'll make people miss in the backfield. And that can make your offensive line, like numbers-wise, they'll look a lot better than what they are. So with Villanueva, Zeitler, Bozeman, uh, and then Big Cleveland, Big Country, Ben Cleveland, and then Ronnie Stanley, and again, hopefully he's back 100% healthy. They can be very dominant, and I think what can make them even more dominant would be the play calling. Would be the play calling. And this is not me bashing Greg Roman whatsoever, but this is me pointing out that play calling, because there's times when the Ravens, there can be some questionable play calling. There's times when the Ravens are doing something well. And then they decide, you know what? Let's, let's go away from it. Let's completely go away from it. In the Steelers game, that was a great example of it. These dudes were running all over in the first Steelers game. Not the C-19 Steelers game, but in the first Steelers game. These dudes were running all over Pittsburgh. Running all over them. Pittsburgh could not stop the run for nothing. What the Ravens decided to do? You know what? Forget the run game. Let's throw that ball all over the field. Let's throw it. And now the Ravens only lost by a score, but still, they were dominating in the run game. And they switched it up. That is so important, man. It's so important that play calling is on point. And of course, execution has to be there as well. They go hand in hand. But it starts at the top. Play calling is it's essential, man. Coaching has to be on point. Execution has to be on point from the players. It goes hand in hand. So everybody got to step it up that much more. And there has to be a certain level of consistency. Because if you establish that certain level of consistency and you stack on that, like Harbaugh likes to say, hey, stack good practices. Well, Ravens need to stack good coaching adjustments. And not even adjustments. If something is working, you don't need to adjust it. Keep it going. 
Keep it going. Not to say you can't switch it up every now and then, but if something's working, let it keep working. Stack those good plays on top of those good plays. That builds up confidence, and that confidence can build up dominance. Especially if you're having your way with running a certain style, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Don't try to fix what's not broken. Because it, oh, man, this could be a beautiful thing. And I love how the Ravens, they, they've addressed it. They've addressed it. Bozeman got to go to his original position most likely. Cleveland will be the left guard. Hopefully Ronnie Stanley comes back. They got a right tackle in Villanueva. And they got a right guard in Zeitler. So they are doing a remix of this offensive line. So they, kn they knew that was a huge problem. They also added some more weapons for Lamar Jackson. They knew that was a problem as well. So I, I like the direction that it's headed. Um, initially, I, I honestly wanted Kelly over Villanueva, Dennis Kelly. Um, and then I thought maybe, hey, may, they may be going in a whole nother direction besides uh, Villanueva or Kelly. But they obviously didn't. So let's go Villanueva. Let's get this thing done. And let's take another step forward uh, as a team. Y'all enjoy the rest of the questions from subscribers. Again, remember, they were all before the Villanueva signing. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Enjoy the rest of the episode. So first question came from my boy Jordan. He said, what's up, Engraven? Long time subscriber, new Patreon. I appreciate that, man. Uh, he said, I know we keep wanting to know how much of an impact and voice Keith Williams and T. Martin are going to have for the Ravens. But I feel like they already have a pretty big impact. I don't think people heard EDC in the post-draft presser when asked about the direction we're going with the wide receivers. He responded with, it really helped having a couple new sets of eyes on the offensive coaching staff uh, and having their perspective on wide receivers was very beneficial, I think, to all of us. So with that being said, my question is, how much of an impact do you think Keith Williams and T. Martin had to do with the Rashad Bateman pick? Sorry for the long message and keep up the good work. Hope you and the family are good. Appreciate that, man. That's a really good question. Um, and I think they, they did have a lot to do with that. And, and the way you broke that down, that's, that's a very good point. Shout out to my guy, JT. We were just talking about this uh, a few weeks ago. And it had completely slipped my mind heading into the draft. Um, but something that he brought up, he was like, their, their, their impact is going to be much bigger than just with the wide receivers that the Ravens already have. Their impact is going to be with the, any receivers that the Ravens get as well. Um, and, and something that he mentioned, and I know a lot of y'all caught the same thing too, is with the Ravens, they didn't just go for guys with crazy speed. You know, they didn't just go for guys with crazy height. Uh, they didn't just go for guys with crazy hands. What they went for in this draft when it came to the receiver position, route runners. Route runners. Great route runners. And that can go such a long way. We've been talking about it on here for years. And I told you, I forgot who said it, whether it was Ocho Cinco, I think it was him, or whether it was Steve Smith Sr., but one of those two talked about how we're at the wide receiver position. You can lose speed. You can lose height. Shout out to Rashad Bateman if that's really true. But you, you can lose all that stuff. But if you, even your hands, are, well, your hands, are, if you ain't really have, you ain't going to lose your Anyway, but if you have good route running, that will extend your career for such a long time, for a super long time. And we've seen it so many times before where, especially at the tight end position too, we know these tight ends, they're slow. They're like, they can be disgustingly slow. But if they have good route running, they'll get separation. Same with wide receivers too. Same thing. So it looks like Ravens are, they really headed in a different direction and they're really trying to get this route game on point. Next question came from my boy Mike B. He said, to me, it feels like a majority of the Ravens flock are more excited about Ben Cleveland than our first rounders, me included. LOL, Stanley, Cleveland, Bozeman, I'm locking him in at center. Zeitler and probably Phillips at tackle. That sounds scary, but just how dominant do you think they could really be? And who is the most intriguing draft pick to you? Love you, man. Hope everything is good your way. Oh, yeah, everything is great, man. Shout out to my guy, Mike B, man. Been just, he been rocking with us heavy for a minute, man. Um, so I appreciate you, man. I uh, hope everything going good with you and your school. I know that been crazy busy on you. So, man, yeah, I hope everything good, though, man. Um, how, how dominant? 
how dominant do you think that they could really be? Like Stanley, we, we know what Stanley can do. And, and if he comes back and he's 100 percent and like really 100 percent, we'll be good to go there. Left guard, if you put uh, Cleveland there, um, hey, just just seeing him, man, like this dude, like it's going to be defensive linemen just looking at him. They're going to be like, oh, I don't, don't want to go rush the quarterback. And, and then at center, uh, Bradley Bozeman, because it seemed like that's more of a reality every day to, and day that we get closer to training camp and all that. Uh, right guard, Zeitler, uh, who is good at his job and a veteran of the game. He knows his stuff. And then at right tackle, Tyree Phillips. Tyree Phillips, and I know uh, a lot of people were down on Tyree Phillips from last year, but again, you guys to remember, this whole C-19 thing, that messed it up for everybody, man. It messed it up for everybody. So if you give this guy a full offseason, and then you have somebody strong next to him as well, and Kevin Zeitler, like the, with the offensive line, it is such like – these guys, they work hand in hand. They work hand in hand, literally, like side by side. And they are only as strong as the guy next to them. So with him having Zeitler there, somebody who got experience in the game, somebody who knows his stuff, that can help him at right tackle. And and there's a possibility we're still waiting for the Ravens to make another move on the offensive line at the tackle position. I know a guy who's been a, like a three-year starter or something like that for the Bears. He just got cut. Or maybe it's even longer than that. Um, and, I mean, there's Villanueva. There's Kelly. There, there's people out there. There's Mitchell Schwartz. There, there's options out there. Just in case the Ravens feel like they want to go with a veteran, even if they just bring in a veteran just to be a backup. They have options. So this offensive line, they could be something serious. They, they, they really could, man. Uh, because they just they got big boys up front, man, and, and especially with the with the Ben Cleveland pick, um, just seeing his numbers and how little like I think he allowed in his entire collegiate career he allowed what three QB pressures and one sack. That don't even make no sense, man. That makes absolutely zero sense. Zero. Nothing about that makes any sense. That's crazy. So you got guys that's that's they gonna go to bat for Lamar, man. They they really are. Um, and I just I'm I'm looking forward to it, and and I really hope that they they just kill it, man. And then he asked, uh, who was the most intriguing draft pick to you? Most intriguing draft pick to me. Who? Um, OA is one of them. But if I had to drop a little bit lower, uh, I would say Wade. I would say Wade because with him, they say he can play inside corner. And I I hope that he doesn't get an opportunity. I, I really hope that he doesn't get an opportunity to play inside corner. But with history, it will show that he may be called upon a lot sooner rather than later. Uh, because with Tay-Tay. And with Tay-Tay, again, we love him. Y'all know we love him. Shout out to him. And, and a special shout out to him, too, because I remember um, uh, back when uh, it was a couple of months back, well, a little more than a couple of months back, um, where there was somebody who reached out because their, their little brother had actually passed. Uh, and he wanted to know if there was anything that the Ravens could do. And we reached out to, to Tavon Young and he said, hey, send me whatever and I'll take care of it. So shout out to Tay Tay, man. Um, but yeah, I just had to, I, cause I remember that and it was just that, that was, that was special, man. Cause that's not something that he has to do. Uh, but the fact that he was willing to do that, that was, that was special, man. Um, but with, with him, I know there's been the injury history and, and again, hopefully that's why I say, hopefully Wade doesn't get to play. Cause that would mean Tavon was healthy the entire season and he makes a big difference, man. And, and him being healthy, that allows Marlon to stay on the outside. Marcus Peters to stay on the outside. It allows Jimmy Smith to get a little less playing time because he won't be called upon so much. So that helps with his health, too. It's just a domino effect. So hopefully that's what goes down this year um, at the cornerback position. It's just health. Health. And, and that's, that's why the Ravens, that's why they have such a stacked secondary because they know, like, one injury could change everything literally like, like that. We've seen it. Um, so 
that would probably be the most intriguing one to me. And then, of course, a way just to see how they can develop him and, and, and how much of a role he has on this team. Next question came from my guy, Teddy. He said, yo, Engraven, I know everyone wants to talk about the Lamar Jackson contract extension, and it is really important. But another really important piece of the offense is in line for an extension as well. That being Mark Andrews. I'm just wondering if it's a mistake to not get his extension done before Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith got their contracts from the Patriots. Mark has been more productive than both of those players over the last three seasons. So he might look at their deals and expect a deal larger than them, uh, which EDC might not want to do. Would love to get your thoughts on this and blessings. Oh, I appreciate it, Teddy. And that is a very good question because, yes, Mark Andrews is certainly due. And, I mean... Of course he will look at those deals and be like, I'm better than them. I want more money than them. Why wouldn't he? And again, with the market, it's not always about who's the best. It's not, it's not always about who's better. It's about timing. It's about timing more than anything in the world when it comes to the market at whatever position it might be. Because you can have a quarterback that's really not that or not as good as the best quarterback in the league but he could end up making more than the best quarterback in the league because he got paid after the best quarterback in the league got his money. That's, that's just how it works. And it happens every single year at so many different positions. Um, so I, don't, I can't say it was a mistake that they didn't sign him before the Jonu Smith deals or before Hunter Henry deal. I got that, it wasn't a mistake. It just hasn't happened yet. And with Lamar, they, they, they got some stuff to figure out. <laughs> they got some stuff to figure out with Lamar Jackson, his deal. And uh, Mark Andrews, but Mark Andrews, it'll be tougher. I mean, no, it'll be. It should be easier to get him squared away. I mean, they're they're forced to get him squared away sooner. Um, or actually, you know what? What they could do, because Lamar, they picked up his fifth year option. What they could do with Mark Andrews, just in case they can't get a deal worked out, they could actually next year they could franchise tag him because Lamar will be on his fifth year option, and Mark Andrews will be a free agent. They could franchise tag him. So that would allow them to uh, to give him the in the average of the top five salary tight ends. And then that will give them some more time to work on a contract extension. Next question came from my boy Dylan. He said, I ain't graving the team. Keep it clean. Hope all is well and everything is smooth sailing right now. I apologize if I'm a bit late to the party, but just wanted to throw my two cents in about Adafe away. I'm not going to talk about numbers or anything like that. Every supporter will find certain numbers relating to him and make the statement true to the best of their ability. Plus, I think it's a tad unfair on someone who is still so raw with the game. Instead, I want to talk about what I believe his pick from Baltimore represents to us as fans and to the team itself. If we look back over time from our drafting, do we do well on defensive picks? We do decent to say the least. However, what I like is the progressive aggressiveness that our picks are taking. I know people would have preferred an offensive lineman with pick 31 and maybe a way was a bit of a reach. But like I said, I love the aggressiveness of the pick. And in our division, which is smash mouth football, we need big, quick, physical players from Bullwear to Suggs to McPhee to Bowser. And I know there's a whole lot more in between. Uh, the one thing our pass rushers had above anything else was size. For a time now, I personally think that we have been behind the eight ball where we have been stuck in drafting a prototypical pass rusher who clogs up space more than anything else. With the right coaching and the willingness to progress, I can see why away can be a boom pick rather than a bust. Also, we have literally just finished with the draft. Not everyone is going to be pleased. Just trust the management and let's see what happens. All the best and stay safe. Yeah, I mean, with, with, uh, with the Ravens, they yeah, that certainly was an aggressive pick. Um, but yeah, they are a team that has been built on defense, obviously. Um, over the past couple of years, a lot has changed, and they've had the number one scoring offense over the past two years, which is crazy. Um, but it's a good crazy because we, we appreciate that. Um, but with uh, with this pick, with Adafe away, um, you you did make a good point. Ravens usually get those space eaters on defense along the defensive line. Why do they do that? Well, because their number one job is to stop the run. That's why they do that. They're, that's what they're looking first and foremost from their defensive linemen. They are trying to stop the run. They don't want anybody running on them. That's been the Ravens thing on defense literally for forever. For forever. So, but one thing that they have been lacking a bit uh, at the pass rush position, especially recently over the past couple of like Suggs was the last guy that was like that guy. Um, but he was the last guy that was just like really that consistent threat like that. Uh, but what they've been lacking at the pass rush position uh, has really been speed. 
spin of speed. Um, and Adafe away, he brings that element of speed that, like, <laughs> it's crazy, man. This dude, he was faster than Bateman. <laughs> he faster than his own receivers. And, like, the speed is real. Because when I watch film on him, the speed is real. It's not just a 4-3. It's not just a combine 4-3. He got on-field in-game speed, too. Uh, so that'll be a nice element that gets brought to the defense. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how this thing works out, man. And I'm very curious. Like I said in my guy Mike B's question from earlier, I'm very curious to see uh, what his role is with the team uh, and, and how he does moving forward, what type of impact he has.